Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk about something that's incredibly important, possibly the most important thing when it comes to playing tennis or improving in tennis. And I often talk about my research where I studied the greatest players in the world and I set their technique as the benchmark of how tennis should be played. But something else that I've done in my research is that I listened and read transcripts of a lot of players interviews. And there's so much value in listening to professional tennis players talk about tennis, but one player in particular, and that's Roger Federer. And one thing that he said that stuck with me was the following. The greatest tennis players are always the greatest movers. And guys, if you think about the greatest players in the history of tennis, you will understand that this is one of the most accurate statements that has been ever made about tennis. And let's talk about some of the greats. For example, Bjorn Borg an unbelievable athlete, an unbelievable mover on the court. How about Steffi Graf, an incredible mover known for her excellent footwork. How about Pete Sampras? I'll never forget, I saw a clip of Pete Sampras playing out a point in a group lesson when he was 11 years old. And I've never ever seen a kid at 11 years old move like Sampras did. So Sampras is one of the greatest movers in the history of tennis. And we don't even have to mention the big four, Andy Murray, Rafael Nadal, Novak Djokovic, and Roger Federer. Some of the greatest movers we have ever seen on the tennis court. How about the new kid on the block, Carlos Alcaraz, who has risen to number one in the world and won the US Open? Again, an unbelievable athlete, an incredible mover. So if you wanna reach the elite level of the game, if you wanna be amongst the best players in the world, you are gonna have a very difficult time doing so without being a great mover. Now I know what you're thinking. You're gonna say, Nick, what about John Isner, Riley Opelka, Milos Raonic, Maria Sharapova? These are not the greatest movers, but yet they reached the top of the game. Well, you have to understand one super important distinction when it comes to movement on the tennis court. There's a big difference between speed and footwork. And look, these two things should never be confused because when we're talking about speed, we're thinking about someone like a Sampras or an Alcaraz who are just incredibly fast players. And that is obviously incredibly important on a tennis court. And you can make the argument that maybe on the ATP Tour, where the game is extremely physical, you're gonna have a very difficult time to win Grand Slam tournaments or become number one in the world if you don't have that speed. On the WTA Tour, I do think it's possible even though the WTA Tour is getting more athletic as well, but someone like a Maria Sharapova is the example that I always use of a player who has excellent footwork, but yet is not necessarily fast, relatively speaking. Maria Sharapova is fast, or let's say was fast when she used to play, but compared to some of the other athletes on the WTA Tour, she wasn't as fast as them, but yet she had excellent footwork. So we have to make the distinction between footwork and speed. You could become an elite level tennis player with relatively slow speed, but there's absolutely no chance you're even gonna reach the high level if you don't possess good footwork. Now I'm gonna explain the difference between speed and footwork when it comes to tennis. So imagine yourself on the baseline and you're in a ready position and somebody hits a drop shot. And now you have to sprint to get that drop shot. Or somebody hits a great angle and you have to sprint laterally towards the ball. Now this is where your speed is gonna be the biggest factor whether you're gonna have success of defending a shot like that. Obviously, if you're someone like Alcaraz or like Nadal, and you run down a drop shot, you're gonna have great advantages over someone like a Sharapova or other players who are not naturally as fast and they're gonna have a more difficult time defending shots like that. Now, what footwork is, is the amount of steps that are required to set up a specific shot. In other words, any shot that I hit, I have to set it up because the thing about tennis is the following. You can never predict how a ball is gonna to come to you. Even if it's coming at you right through the middle of the court, it still requires footwork, it still requires setup. There is a certain amount of steps that you have to make in order to set up a specific shot. And guys, without this footwork, you're gonna have a very difficult time advancing in the game of tennis. As I said before, good footwork is necessary if you wanna reach the high level. You will not see a high level tennis player 
with bad footwork. Like I said, you might see a high level tennis player who's maybe not fast like some other players, but you will never see a high level player that doesn't have good footwork. And why would that be the case? Because if you don't have good footwork, you will not be able to set up your shot properly and you're gonna commit a ton of mistakes because of it. Quick interruption guys, we'll get right back to the video, but I wanna show you something that's quite frankly genius. You see how the ball is going forward, but yet the tip of my racket is going up and then across this device called the Top Spin Pro. See, a lot of people have this faulty mental image that we must hit forward in order to get the ball to go to the other side. And this is completely false. The Top Spin Pro will teach you the correct swing path. And not only do I recommend this device for the recreational level, this is something that I use personally to improve my forehand and backhand top spin. So go to the description, click the link and get yourself a Topspin Pro. So here's the important question. What Roger Federer said is absolutely true. And all of us should strive to improve our footwork and also to improve our speed because this is going to help us tremendously on a tennis court. Because let's face it, we're going to have to chase that ball down. It's not going to come right to us. And tennis is all about movement, which should be a reminder to you that when you're practicing, not to just stand in place, this might be okay if you're working on something technical, but every tennis practice should involve movement because this is going to be the real deal guys when you step on that match court the balls are not going to be coming to you and you're going to have to rely on your movement so let's talk about how you can develop your speed first and we of course have to encompass everything that is related to speed on the court flexibility range of motion agility these are all things that you're going to have to work on and i made a great video this is the first time that i got out of shape on purpose and I tried to get myself in good tennis shape and I titled this video getting back in shape and I performed various tennis specific exercises and these are drills that are very tennis specific some of the other drills performed in this video are drills that I've been doing with my dad for many many years and all these drills mimic the exact movements that you're going to be doing on a tennis court and I highly recommend that you watch this video and that you copy these drills if you want to improve your overall fitness and speed when playing tennis. And when it comes to tennis specific footwork, this is where things get more complex. They get more complicated. And I made a course that's more than two hours long titled the intuitive tennis footwork. Things that you do have to learn regarding tennis footwork. There are going to be rules that you have to follow regarding tennis footwork. It's not all natural. Some movements in tennis are counterintuitive. But one thing that I can tell you, that also featured in this course is something that I've talked about many times in many of my videos and it is possibly the biggest flaw at the recreational level and that is the fact that players will stand on their heels and they lack intensity, they lack readiness. They are relating the pace of the incoming ball and determine how they're going to move. So when the ball comes at them easy and slow, they will become very nonchalant and they lose all the intensity. This is something that you don't see at the high level because no matter if the ball is fast or slow, the ball will always be unpredictable. So you have to treat every ball seriously. You have to set up every ball with a tremendous amount of intensity. I always say this, you go to your local club, you take a look at the players, especially when they play doubles, and you're going to see tons of players just standing on their heels. Guys, I'm going to keep repeating this until it clicks because you guys need to change this. You will never ever see a high-level player standing on their heels. High-level players are always on their toes, they're always moving around, they're always ready. So this is something that's also very important, that's the readiness factor that is connected to intensity. So the first thing that you can do is increase your intensity. You got to get your heels off the ground. Something that John McEnroe said, one of the greatest tips ever, is that you always try to keep your heels off the ground when you're playing tennis. This is something that I've always done. Now people that don't know anything about tennis have made fun of me and the way I run because when I jog I kind of jog on my toes which is not the correct technique but I'm kind of like Sharapova. A lot of people ask me Nick who would you compare yourself with on the professional tour and I always say I'm the male version of Sharapova. Not as good I'm the poor man's version of Sharapova because just like her I'm not very fast but I do have excellent tennis specific footwork.
And on top of that, I do have a lot of intensity and this is what you guys need as well. You need the whole package, no doubt about it. You gotta get yourself in shape. You gotta lose the extra pounds. I have a great video on my website where I show you how you can do that. Also, you have to always try to improve your tennis speed. But most importantly, what you can do right now is get those heels off the ground, start getting on your toes, start being ready. Don't underestimate any balls and try to set up every ball to the best of your abilities.